Hey guys, welcome to Divine Conversations and welcome to your readings for August 2019. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to make a big old shout out to the Leos out there. Happy, happy birthday to you. We are in Leo season right now. And I want to make a big old shout out to the August Virgos out there. Yeah, happy birthday to you guys as well. So I am back to my old format. Um, I have one central intro that I have recorded for everybody that everybody's going to see the same old thing and then we'll get into the reading yes so you will find a timestamp in the comments section that's pinned at the very top that will take you to the beginning of the actual reading so if you're watching multiple videos and you don't want to watch the intro over and over again you can use that timestamp I do recommend that you watch it at least once just so that you can get the general information may clear up some questions you may have yeah so I would love it if you guys would connect with me on social media. You can find the links to my, my social media accounts, both Instagram and Facebook, in the description box below. But Instagram is at divine underscore conversations. And Facebook is facebook.com slash divine conversations 2711. Yes, which is very similar to my actual email address. All right. These are a general reading. So please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. If you'd like to look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All of the information is in the description box below, including the readings that I offer. So just read through that and then hit me up. Let me know which reading you would like. If you can't decide if, or if you have trouble, go ahead and email me anyway and describe the situation a little bit and I will absolutely help you choose. Yeah. If you would like to get a, a personal reading, um, I do recommend that you reach out either via email or at the very least through Instagram. Um, I don't recommend that you send me a message on Facebook because I do not always get those right away. I, I've noticed that I, oh, first of all, I don't get a notification from Facebook saying that I have um, messages on that page. Um, so often when I find them, it's like, maybe sometimes days later. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so for those of you that kind of missed out or got lost or something, I apologize for that. But Facebook isn't the best way to reach out to me. You can reach out on Instagram. I do get those notifications and I do see that. I, I do check that more often. But ultimately, I'm really just going to send you to email. All right. So you might as well just, you know, cut the extra steps and just email me. Okay. Because that's really where I handle all of the personal readings. Keep in mind that time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So yes, this is a message coming through that's dated for August of 2019, but it does not have to resonate now. We could be talking about a situation that happened months prior, or we could talk about something that could be coming on months in advance. I do recommend that maybe you check in maybe at the, at the end of the month if you are catching this towards the beginning of the month to see if it resonates for you. But either way, or to see how it resonates for you, but either way, whenever you watch the video and it resonates at that time, then that is the message for you at that time, regardless of the date. Also, keep in mind that for the cross watchers out there, I am speaking directly to the zodiac sign in question, okay? But if you're watching the reading and it's resonating for you, then take that message. Okay. So what I may be saying for the Zodiac sign in question, let's say Aries or Leo, and you don't have that placement or you're not looking at it because you have Aries or Leo in your chart. And yet what I'm saying is resonating for you. Then maybe that message is in fact for the cross watcher and not the actual Zodiac sign in question. Again, it's a general reading. Take it as it resonates, but also please do not try to fit something into your life or into the, the situation that doesn't fit already. Like if you're watching and you're saying to yourself, Hmm, he's saying this, but that really doesn't resonate with my situation. Then let it go. Don't take it. Okay. Cause that means it's just not a message for you again general reading yeah okay um i guess that's it so with that said why don't we get started to, with the reading yeah <laughs> hey there aries welcome to your reading for august 2019 thank you so much for tuning in all right guys let's dive right in here um as i was channeling your energy uh immediately i was seeing orange okay with a little bit of yellow in the background on that now orange um, is the color of the sacral chakra, which is your emotions. And now technically, logically speaking also, the yellow would be of the, of the, the solar plexus chakra, which is right above the sacral, okay? But 
what I'm getting with this is that there's some emotional cleansing, emotional healing, even maybe a, a little bit of emotional maturity coming into play for you either this month or this is just what you're, the message that you need for right now, okay? Um, and as I was channeling through that energy, I was seeing the Queen of Wands. Like I literally saw the Queen of Wands card, which technically would be your energy as an Aries, all right? The Queen of Wands is the cardinal energy of the fire, uh, of, of the Wands suit or the fire signs. And as an Arian, you are that cardinal energy. This could represent another fire sign, either uh, Sagittarius or Leo, but that's what I was seeing for channeling for you, okay? So then I started getting into the pre-shuffle here, and the first card was none other than the Hermit, all right? this Yes, this is technically, this is Virgo energy. I'm sorry, guys. There's still a bunch of sand, like, all over because I was at the beach yesterday. Anyway, um, uh but emotional clearing, emotional cleansing, going within, doing your inner work, finding your inner light, um, working on uh, self-awareness. Okay, that's beautiful. And then, under, and then I looked because this was the first card that came out, and I looked underneath the deck, and at that moment, it was none other than the King of Wands. All right, so you do have a balance between masculine and feminine energy, but something about what you're going through right now is allowing you to step into your more confident elements. Yes, the King of Wands is Leo energy, but it's also the fixed sign, yes, but it's also the masculine, which is the uh, go-getting, the doing energy. It's like you're getting into a mode of doing, okay? Which is probably, I mean, it's not like you don't, you, you weren't a doer before, but I just feel like what you're moving forward towards right now is a different, you're, you're approaching things in a different way. You're way more confident. You're also way more self-aware. And if you're not there right now, this is what you're moving towards if you're resonating with this, okay? To corroborate that, you do have the Ace of Wands, the Moon, with the Page of Wands, and then underneath the deck is the Ace of Swords, all right, so there's clarity that's coming into your life here. And with the Ace of Swords being at the bottom of the deck, this clarity has everything to do with closing out some cycles, revealing some things that might have been hidden for you with the moon. It's helping you to gain a little more self-awareness with the Page of Wands, because yes, the Page of Wands is a messenger, is also the start of a new creative project, but I also see the Page of Wands, especially in the, the way it's depicted here. Well, it's usually depicted as this. In the, in, the, in the traditional Rider Waite deck, it's depicted this way in, the, in terms of um, a, a, a man or a, normally it's a young man because it's a page, but a, a man, um, you know, sizing up this wand that he's got, okay? Self-discovery, in my opinion, and I love the fact that in this deck, this is a grown-ass man, which to me speaks to the fact that you can never really stop learning. You never really stop learning about yourself. There's always new things to discover, but this is all leading you to move in a new creative direction, or for some of you, this is a refreshing of creative drive, um, energetic, you know, you know, getting that energetic drive back to move in a, maybe in a new direction or just a move move forward forcefully i heard but with greater force or with new force um ch different force um more focused force also with this ace of swords here it's like it's like you're some of you are refocusing in a way mm. sorry guys oh <laughs> i needed to drink some water all right Cool. Cool. All right. Let's. So, so with that said, that's really beautiful, Aries. I love that. So let's get into it. Uh, some of you also may have a new creative project that you're getting into. This might be a career situation for you as well. Um, something that is in greater alignment with you. Uh, and also there may be some sort of communication coming through in terms of that with the Ace of Swords. Yes. All right, Aries. 444 on the counter. So let's get into this. I'm going to give this one shuffle. And then we're going to get into the rest of your reading here. All right, kids, let's do it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for Aries at this time. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for the month of August 2019. Thank you so much, Spirit. 
All right, Aries, I'm going to give this five shuffles, and then we've see, we'll see what we've got here. But at the... Ooh, flyers. All right. Okay, so the Seven of Swords has flown out here. And it's in reverse, but it's really just... It, it's mostly in reverse because of the nature of the way that I shuffle the cards and the way that this would fall out. And if you notice, this side of the deck would have been reversed, but I turned it upright. And I'm trying to debate what I'm trying to decipher whether I should turn this Seven of Swords upright or leave it reversed. Leave it reversed, they're saying. I don't know. It really, I, I honestly don't really know how to look at this. Other, I, I feel because I feel either way, it's gonna mean the same thing. Um, but I, what I'm hearing is with this Seven of Swords, I'm hearing detachment. There is a situation here for some of you in which you are in this Queen of Pentacles energy, which is a very motherly, grounded wife um, type energy. It doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman. Or you, I mean, or whether you um, resonate with masculine more energy over feminine energy, um, what this is speak what this, mm. this is interesting. This is really specific, and I'm working on pinpointing what this is actually talking about. I'm getting a wife and mother vibe. Um, this is a specific message for someone. In order for you to make a decision here with this two of swords energy, you need to detach from the situation. And I think why this 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 was saying they want they were saying they wanted me to leave this in reverse was because someone is really having trouble detaching because you are in this vibration but you're in a little bit of a smother vibration with the Queen of Pentacles, and that's clouding your judgment with the Two of Swords. Okay, you need to detach from whatever this situation is for you. Now, this absolutely could be part of you going down and doing that deeper um, emotional clearing and cleansing because also what I was going to say was. Uh, uh, um, as I was praying over the cards and channeling for you and, and getting ready to start the shuffle, I was seeing yellow as the prominent color, um, but with that orange underneath. So it had like it had it had flipped. Where in the beginning of the reading, when I was channeling for you guys, when I got your pre-shuffle, I was seeing the orange and then the yellow was in the background. But now it seems to have flipped in the sense of the yellow is in the forefront and the orange is in the background. So someone needs to put logic um, over emotion. Now, now, I'm not saying to, to uh, push your emotions aside or to try and, 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 and squash your emotions, but there needs to be a, a level of detachment here for whomever this is who's resonating with this part of the reading because your emotions or your attachment to the situation is clouding your judgment. You are in a good energy with the Queen of Pentacles, but you need to detach to see the, the, to see the bigger picture or to see things clearer. Okay, excellent. Now, let's get these five shuffles in for you, Aries, for your month of August 2019. Yeah, one. For my Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus, two. Three. Ooh, ooh, no more flyers. Please, Spirit, let's just get to the reading. For my Aries. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Four. For August 2019 and beyond. And five. All right, Aries. Let's see what we've got for you. Boop. Overall energy for you, Aries. We've got, ah, the nine of cups. Excellent. Satisfaction. I mean, I feel like a lot of you have really been doing a lot of work here and you're really starting to, and, and, and by work, I mean inner work, soul searching, that not that, that hermit energy, you know, going down within, deep within yourself um, and really becoming way more self-aware. And it doesn't even feel like you're really getting much on the external with this Nine of Cups, this wish fulfillment, other than just emotional satisfaction within yourself. The effort that you've been putting forward in learning about yourself and understanding why things may have happened the way they have in, in the past or in your lifetime or whatnot, leading, whatnot, whatever, leading up to this point um, is really starting to pay off just because there's more emotional 
balance, okay? The waters of your emotions, the ocean of your emotions is not as choppy anymore. Like, yeah, you might have some, some storms here or there and, you know, it might get really wavy and awesome, but it really feels like you're learning to surf pretty fucking well. And that's awesome. That's really awesome, Aries. Underneath the deck, you do have the seven, oh, I'm sorry, underneath the nine of cups, you have the seven of cups, okay? Under that, you have death. And under that, you've got the Three of Cups. Let's, I mean, emotion all over the place here, but this is a good thing, all right? Uh, the Seven of Cups is talking about this emotional clearing for you, all right? So literally everything I just said that was just channeled in just from the Nine of Cups alone has come out here because you have death, which could be Scorpio energy for you. You could have Scorpio in your chart. You might be dealing or have a relationship with a Scorpio um, in terms of like that queen of pentacles energy that just came forward with the seven of swords and needing to be attached, may maybe needing to be detached. Maybe you're dealing with a Scorpio or maybe you have Scorpio in your chart, or this is that transformation for you that has, that's, that is influenced or catalyzed by your detachment. But everything that I was speaking to in that nine of cups is right here, doing the emotional clearing, going through the transformation and then being able to celebrate, just feel good. And this is even the universe kind of celebrating with you. Like, yeah, honey, you did it like fucking right. I'll drink to that. You know what? I'll drink to that. <laughs> All right, cool. All right, Aries. So let's get into the rest of your reading here. First half, second half of your reading. You could look at this as the first half and the second half of your month. I recommend that you just look at it as the first and second half of your reading because time is an illusion and energies are fluid. However, take it however it resonates for you, okay? Excellent. First set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading, Aries, you have strength. You see? You see, all of this work that you've been doing through, going through is really paying off because you are taming that beast. And it's really not even about trying to control the beast because it's an understanding of the beast is who the beast is. The beast was made to be the beast that it is. We are not trying to control you. We are not just trying to change you. We're just trying to understand you so that we can stay balanced. This is what you're saying to yourself and maybe your inner child or your, your, inner, your inner reality. And thus, it's really paying off. It's like you can approach this beast within, pet it, cuddle it, give it smooches and whatnot without fear of it hurting you because you have found that balance, that peace, that harmony, that inner relationship with it. Now, <laughs> when it comes in terms of other people, you're not afraid to let this beast loose in the right moment. And that, I think, I, is, is just fine, okay? Because I don't feel like you're coming from a place of trying to hurt people, but if people rub you the wrong way and you warn them, you, and, and look, look, I'm warning you, don't play me like that. But then they keep pushing you, okay. You asked for it. <laughs> but it's not still, it's not even malicious. It's not even like you're like you're you're trying to hurt someone. It's not even like you're going straight for the jugular without even really giving it a second thought. It's really more about defense. Having that relationship where you can basically play with your inner beast and still have that that fierce fighter too. It's really great. Strength is coupled with, oh yes, the king of swords. Mm, airy, uh, not Aries, uh, Aquarian energy, potentially, maybe another, uh, uh, maybe another air sign, Gemini or, or, or uh, Libra. Uh, but this is just you being balanced. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna attack you, but don't fuck with me. <laughs> I love it. I love it, Aries. Second set of surrounding energies for you in the first half of your reading here, Aries. You've got the devil. Ooh. Capricorn could be dealing with a Capricorn. I just feel like you're facing the devil here. The devil is coupled with, yeah, the hanged man. That's right. You're facing the devil. Pisces energy also um, with the hanged man. But it's, it's really, you're gaining a new perspective. Some of the things that may have, um, that you may have gotten caught up in, maybe some addictions, toxicity, codependency, whatnot, any of those energies that might have tripped you up in the past, you've gained a different perspective or maybe you're gaining a new perspective and you don't see these devilish energies the same way anymore. Like they don't have the same control over you that they may have in the past. Some of you have really may have come to a position in which... Um, you see through some things. And so because of that, you're ending some cycles because you see differently now. 
And that may have a lot to do with like your own state of independence here. That's beautiful, Aries. Your challenge in the first half of your reading here, you have the fool taking a leap of faith. And it's interesting. It's interesting because it doesn't really feel like you're having that much of a trouble with agreeing to take a leap of faith. I think this is more about which direction do I want to go in? And that could be what this Seven of Cups energy is here too. With all, with all of the emotional clearing and cleansing and healing that you may be doing, now you may be realizing that you really have a ton of options. You could really go in any direction. So you might be really trying to figure out what direction that is specifically. Excellent. Excellent. The Fool is coupled with the Knight of Swords. Woo! Interesting. Um... Okay, there may be some hastiness here, Aries. There really might be to just charge in and just like go for it. You, uh, I feel like some of you need to take a little more time to just decide, rest a little more. Allow yourself to really sink into this new security, this new emotional security that you've either found or are cultivating. Give your, I'm hearing, give yourself a little more time to just allow the lessons to sink in. You don't have to rush into anything, okay? You, when the time is right, you will know when to take that leap, okay? Closing message or potential outcome for you, Aries, in the first half of your reading, you have, I told you, the Knight of Pentacles. Slow and steady wins the race. Some of you really do kind of got to just slow down a little bit. And I know how triggering, I know how triggering that, that phrase can be, slow down, but um, you, don't have to, you don't have to take the leap now, all right? You don't have to make the decision now. You don't have to choose a direction or you don't have to do it right now. There are still some things you can do in the meantime in order to really work on getting everything together with this Knight of Pentacles energy, okay? Knight of Pentacles is coupled with the Hierophant. All right, some of you are going to need to do this by the book here. Only for the time being, Aries. And I know that's kind of frustrating. Like, I, I understand because a lot of you, for what you've been going through, you've been doing a lot of breaking free. This Hierophant energy could be very similar to the Devil energy that you're breaking free from. But in terms of some things right now, okay, there is, there, there, there is an established order to things that... Even though it can be very confining, it is kind of beneficial in the long run for some situations. So some of you are just kind of having, going to have to follow. I don't know how else to say it other than just do it, do things by the book for now. This could be messages from your higher self in how to do this. Yeah, that's really all I'm getting with that. Take it as it resonates. I don't know. See, we'll see if maybe we can get a little more definition with that moving forward. But it's just about, it's, it's really about needing to do the things by the book right now. Not going against the grain, at least just yet. It's not going to be that way forever. But just for right now. Okay, just for right now. All right. Getting into the second half of your reading here, Aries, first set of surrounding energies, you've got, ah, yes, the world. But also this could be why you need to just kind of like go with the flow, follow, go, don't try to go against the grain right now because there are some things that are closing out for you. And it's for your safety and your protection. It's for the safety of this foundation that you built that you don't rock the boat too much. All right. You kind of, I kind of feel like you really, it would be best for you to just fly under the radar for the moment until you get your footing squared away. And then you can start to, you know, run in ways that, I don't, whatever. You know what I mean? The world is coupled with, ah, the emperor. It's so funny because when I was channeling, when I was looking at this Hierophant energy, also, this is you, Aries, as, a, as you know, that's, this is officially your card. But when I, was, when I was looking at 
and speaking on the the energies of the hierophant and i was saying there's a certain way there's a set way to do things for a reason because it helps it can help really help you ch achieve your goal in the long run i was envisioning and picturing the emperor because that's really what the emperor can stand for you know doing things by the book going with a set plan or whatnot or doing things in a certain way because we know it gets us a specific result now as the emperor that can be a bit detrimental because you could be doing that you could be so so ingrained in that that you're forcing people to lose their sense of individuality but that's not what i'm picking up here okay what you what's going through what's happening for you aries is there is a site there are cycles closing out that are actively bringing you into this energy of being that much more of a master of your own domain but that's the reason why you need to kind of go against the, go with the book right now and not go against the grain so that you can really close out these cycles and really be free to take the leap of faith with the fool okay because right after the world you cycle back to the fool excellent aries second set of surrounding energies in the second half of your reading here you have the seven of pentacles yes all right cool so you're at a checkpoint aries now this is the time instead of focusing on exactly what direction to move in right now is a really good time to reflect on where you've been in the past how things have worked out what was desire about desirable about it and what was not desirable desirable about it and what got you to those respective places and then once you have a, a a strong understanding of that you can then look forward and say all right so with everything that i see here with all this seven of pentacles energy with reviewing my harvest and whatnot, whatever, where do I want to go with all of that? Okay, what leap of faith am I taking? What direction am I moving in? Especially with the Seven of Cups here. What direction am I moving in? And what knowledge do I need to keep in the forefront of my mind from, from what I've learned in the past to help me get there? Okay, that's what this seven of pentacles energy is saying for you right now seven of pentacles is coupled with the moon uh, there's that moon again cycles are closing out but things are coming are, are being illuminated for you you ask actually you also want to really um work on listening to allowing your intuition to guide you here now from you can use this uh, from a logical standpoint of analyzing what it is that needs to be understood with the seven of pentacles and then you can incorporate your intuition or your subconscious to help direct you in the next in the new direction in terms of what you are processing here with the seven of pentacles okay that's beautiful your challenge in the second half of your reading here aries you have woo, the four of wands ah. You have this coming, Aries. I feel this energy for you. But the challenge, it being in the challenge is really just being patient enough to allow the foundation to settle. I know you are so eager to keep building, but check it out, Aries. If you want your house to stand and stand well, you have to give the foundation that you just laid, first of all, some time to dry, but then also you need, to, you need to give it some time to settle into the ground around you so that when you start building the rest of your house, it doesn't start settling on you and now things are kind of going wonky, okay? For those of you that aren't quite understanding what I'm saying, if you've never actually like had a house built or built your own home or something like that, the process is first you have to prepare the ground and then you have to lay the pour and lay and or lay the foundation of that house, right? But then you can't once the foundation dries, you can't just start building. You have to give it some time to settle into the ground because the the ground is whatever you laid there is going to compact the ground underneath it even more. So you just for safety reasons Okay, you have to give that foundation that you laid some time to settle, right? So that's what I often see here with the Four of Wands. Because the Four of Wands can be seen as, yes, foundation laid, excellent work has been done. You can definitely see this as a, as a celebration time. But 
This is not a time to rest on your laurels or forget about the fact that you still have work to do. The foundation has been laid. You still have a rest of the house to build. But while the foundation is settling, you can enjoy yourself. You can have a party. You can celebrate this, that, and the other. Okay. The Four of Wands can also talk about marriage. It can also talk about the family and all that kind of stuff. But take and, and, and this foundation that we're talking about here, especially in terms of like this emotional clearing that's going on for you, could absolutely be what is helping to lead you towards marriage, but you don't want to rush. Allow that. Oh, there you go. Wow. Okay. We really could be talking about marriage energy because death can be a symbol of marriage and so can the Hierophant. But again... You don't want to rush this. Slow and steady wins the race. This, if you really want, if you really want to get married and you want that to really last, like me personally, I would love to get married again, but I'm divorced and I'm divorced right now. But now I, I, I've been having been through that situation and learned about it. I'm incredibly grateful for it because now I really understand what it really takes to be married. What is the foundation or the, uh, the, 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 the basis of the relationship between the two individuals that is needed in order to have a successful marriage that isn't going to end in divorce or isn't going to blow up in your face? And that is, for the most part, time. You might feel a connection with someone in which you feels really, really strong and you're like, holy shit, I'm going to marry this person. But then as time goes on, you guys start to learn more and more about each other and you start to settle more and more into relationship, into the relationship and you start to find the discrepancies. And then it's like, well, now what do we do? And if you've shotgunned and now you're married already and now you're starting to figure all this out, oh, fuck. Now what do we do? Okay? You want to avoid that, Aries. Take the time. Now, that was a pretty specific message for those of you that want to be married, but you could even take that analogy and put it to use in, in any other situation, okay? Four of Wands is coupled with the Chariot. Ah! So you have two Cancer energies here between the Moon and the Chariot. You have Aries. You have Pisces. You also have Pisces. Uh, you have Pisces with the, high, uh, the Hanged Man, but you also have Pisces with the Moon because in the Tarot, officially the Moon represents... Uh, Pisces, but in astrology, Cancer is ruled by the moon. You also have Aquarius energy, you have Capricorn, you have Scorpio, and you have Taurus. You could also have Virgo or, um, Virgo or, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, you also have Virgo or Gemini energy here in the Knights. All right, but the challenge for you with the Four of Wands and the Chariot is <laughs> to not move too fast. We know that you know which way you want to go, says the universe. But slow and steady wins the race, okay? The chariot is a very fast-moving energy. And it could even be for some of you that you can't be really rushed into this because you still have a little more aligning to do in order to have the perfect amount of force or the perfect amount of aim to really take off when it's time to take off, all right? Closing message or potential outcome in the second half of your reading here, Aries, you have the King of Pentacles. Lots of very grounding energies here, but also this is the counterpart to that Queen of Pentacles that came out in the flyers, okay? King of Pentacles is coupled with, oh, the Five of Swords. Woo! Mmm. <clears throat> I'm going to take one more card, Aries. Three of Pentacles. Someone doesn't want to work together. Someone is not a team player. And I'm, I'm feeling the connection back to the Queen of Pentacles, but I'm trying to see what the connection here is. Oh, 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 I get it. Okay, so... Um, the connection back to the Queen of Pentacles, you really need to detach here because whomever this King of Pentacles is for you or whomever this, this counterpart is or this person who's perceived to be a counterpart to you is, is not willing to work together. Five of Swords, Three of Pentacles. They want it their way. It's either their way or the highway. And they don't realize just how detrimental this is, not only to the people around them, but to their own selves. 
So you need to detach from the situation. And if it's going to crash and burn, you need to allow it to crash and burn on its own. There's the smother energy. You're trying to keep it from crashing and burning. I understand. You love this person, but they got to handle that themselves. They are making their own bed. They need to lay in it. You do not need to allow yourself to continue to get caught up in that because it's going to tear you down with it too. And you don't deserve that. Okay? You don't deserve that. Now, in terms of the rest of this reading here, your haste, Aries is going to ruin your foundation. You have to continue to allow yourself to build this foundation first or at least allow the foundation to settle in before you move forward. Cuz in terms of in terms of the rest of the reading uh, this what we're talking about here in the reading in terms of your foundation that's really just needs a chance to settle in, you are defeat you are sabotaging your own self by trying to move too quickly, okay? But now also, on the other hand, you could look at it as you're really figuring this out at this point. And you are very much willing to do the self-mastery, continue doing the self-mastery work because it's just, it's bringing you so much emotional satisfaction, Aries. It's just like, I really don't need to do anything else. Like I could just sit here and do this inner work for the rest of my life and I will just be so fucking happy. And you're absolutely right, Aries. You are absolutely right, okay? Damn, I love that. I love that. All right, cool, Aries. So now we're gonna close out your reading and we're gonna get, we're gonna get you some Oracle guidance here for your month of August, 2019. From Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. Last shuffle. for the month of August, 2019. All right, Aries, here we go. Best message, please, Spirit, to close out this reading from Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. I'm gonna let it fall out, guys. Just let it fall out. Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus. There it is. Okay, collaborative dreaming. <laughs> this one's not relevant, but Collaborative dreaming. And actually, this is what came out for Sagittarius. Now, if you haven't, I mean, you guys probably have by now watched a lot of, a lot of you may have already watched the uh, Sagittarius reading, but that reading, man, was intense. It made me cry. Um, maybe you should watch that. There might be a connection here. Maybe you have Sagittarius in your chart or it's in a placement in your chart that would be significant because the energy was surrounding like some sort of family, early childhood situation. Um, yeah, even if you don't have Sagittarius in your chart, it might be something that is connected to this. So if you feel guided to watch that reading, go right ahead. But for you Aries, let's read into this. And this is a little more of a longer one, so just Bear with me, okay? Your heart is big enough to dream, not only for yourself, but for a new humanity. Imagine a world that is healed with respect, understanding, and with community that fosters life. Even your dreams that relate to you alone will contribute positively to the greater good because that is the nature of your heart. Your heart naturally and intelligently cooperates in a grand scheme of loving creativity, working to heal the hearts of the world. The heart creates win-win situations that benefit the individual and the collective. You are being asked to honor your growing desire to co-create with conscious, like-minded people. Your collaborative dreaming is a heart-inspired win-win, bringing mutual enhancement to yourself and others. The heart wants to love and be loved. Working with others creatively is a way to allow the heart to grow. It is a chance for you to learn how to honor yourself and others and to find ways to live and let live simply by growing and strengthening your active trust in your heart's guidance. You are asked to bear through the rough patches that can happen when you work creatively with others. Ideas might clash and there be, can be friction, particularly if you are having ways, uh, if you have different ways of working. Sometimes big dreams need more fire to ignite them into reality. More fire might, might require more friction along the creative path. 
It is not meant to be a permanent condition. It is just an aspect of the creative process from which you can learn something useful if you wish. Your guidance is to embrace any experiences of friction or tension within yourself or as you work with another with compassion, detachment, and tolerance. Detachment, ding, ding, ding. Creative endeavors, particularly involving groups, can, be, can bring up unresolved issues about being valued, heard, or capable. They can also trigger disputes about taking responsibility or inflame insecurities about being cast into unfamiliar roles of leadership or of having to follow. This might happen for you, for others, or for all involved. The stronger the creative energy that flows, the more likely that triggering will take place. It is the nature of creative energy to move in all directions. It doesn't just want to grow one project. Everything that comes into contact with it will grow. That means that the art of the artists are in the process of creation. I'm sorry, that means that the art and the artists are in the process of creation. This can be smooth, this can be smooth but it is likely, it is likely, more likely to be rough sailing, at least at times. This is not a sign that something isn't working, far from it. It is more usually a sign that growth is happening and you are feeling the growing pains. This oracle is guiding you to stay in your integrity, honor what you feel, and remember why you chose to open up to group endeavors in the first place, especially if the group involvement becomes complex or challenging. Call on unconditional love each day, each day and evening. It only takes a moment to do. I call on unconditional love. Please help and guide me and this project. You are going through this experience or will be in the near future because you are part of a new creative learning program for humanity. This learning program is taking place at a spiritual level and it requires highly individualistic and creative people to learn to work with each other without compromising who they are in order to reach a common creative goal. It is wonderful, important, and challenging creative and spiritual work. You need a strong sense of self to be able to engage in the process and not lose your voice during, during the journey. You need a strong enough sense of self to be flexible and know when to bend rather than break. You have to intuit what is going to be a good start. Uh, what is, you have to intuit what is going to be a good heart inspired sacrifice for the greater good and when you will need to stay true to your own voice for the greater good. Only the heart can guide you on these matters and others may not always agree with your instincts and vice versa. That is part of the challenge of staying present so that the friction created can be channeled into creative energy rather than lost in emotional turmoil. Please remember that what really matters is that you hear your own voice. Others may or may not be able to receive it. When you hear your own voice, you will be able to connect with your heart truths. You will know when it is right to remain in a group or when you need to withdraw in order to work with others who resonate at a more appropriate vibration and perhaps more in harmony with your own. Not every collaboration will be, will be long term. Sometimes the learning will be short, sharp, and possibly even painful before it turns into the wisdom that is gained from experience. At other times, the journey will be more loving, supportive, and harmonious. This is neither better nor worse, just different. This oracle comes with particular guidance for you at this phase of your path, of your life path and creative journey. You are no longer to think of yourself as a lone wolf. Yes, you have your unique path to tread, but you now have tasks to accomplish for your own growth and the greater good that require more than, one ma more than a one-man band. You will still do your own work, of course. However, others are on the way to help you. There is only so much a single drop of water can do on its own, though it is precious. Together, those drops can become a wave and make a considerable impact in the world. You are a part of a wave of loving consciousness and you are meant to be exploring collaborative dreams, healing relationships, and conscious communities. Some connections will be short-lived and perhaps involve some learning experiences that you are hopeful of never needing to repeat. Others will be longer-term loves. Either way, you will emerge more of yourself and more in connection with the world that wants your ideas, presence, energy, and light. This oracle brings a message to those of you who are involved in a group and are struggling over whether to continue or, to, or let it go and move on. You are asked to trust your heart and not allow any group to become more powerful than the wisdom of your own heart. Always allow the sacred rebel within you to question authority. It is loving, and I'm sorry, is it loving and wise authority? Or is it 
coming from a place of fear-based control. Look to your heart's wisdom to discern whether your involvement in a group is healthy or not. Sometimes a group can only receive so much of our energy before it is time to move on. Sometimes a group is not receiving us at all, but we feel that we are meant to be a guiding hand in it for a period of time before our heart urges us to let go. Ask for guidance. Do the healing process below, which I can share with you guys. Yeah. Um, do the healing process below. In the, uh, and trust in the feelings that become clear to you over time. You will know what to do and you must always trust your own voice above any other. And so I'll, I don't normally do this. I don't normally do this. I've been saying in morning coffee that um, I'm trying not to make this a habit, <laughs> but it seems like it's going in this way anyway. I don't know, whatever. But I normally keep these for, um, yeah. I normally keep these just for the personal readings, but I'm gonna do it anyway. So here, there's, here's the beginning of the healing process. It's right here. And then here's the other part. So you can go ahead and just like pause the video or something, okay? But there you have it, Aries. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Again, if you'd like a look into your own personal situation, please don't hesitate to email me. All the information is in the description box below. But with that said, thank you so much for tuning in and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading for September. Yeah, take care. Mwah! Bye.